You just got done talking to Danny Dimes here entering a prove it year in year four. What are some of the expectations both external and internal for Jones? Yeah, listen, Daniel Jones is not the kind of guy who's going to come out here, even with a, a guy who's from Charlotte uh, like himself, and sit here and tell you exactly what his individual goals, dreams, and desires are. But uh, he understands and knows what the season is, is about. The New York Giants did not pick up his fifth-year option. It's a big year for him from a contract perspective. It's a big year from a reputation perspective. And obviously, every year is a big year from where you want to go with your football team. And he knows that he needs to use his legs a whole lot more, and that's what Brian Dable is hoping to get out of Daniel Jones. Uh, he said, listen, yeah, we're going to be vanilla here in the preseason, but Brian Dable coming from, of course, the Buffalo Bills and unlocking Josh Allen like he was able to do, making that big jump in year two and three, that's what we're hoping to see out of Daniel Jones and the New York Giants. Unfortunately for Daniel, he doesn't have the supporting cast around him here with the Giants as Josh Allen had in Buffalo, but certainly has the athleticism. We saw him take off on a scramble against the New England Patriots in that preseason game that you referenced out here at practice earlier today. Saw him using his legs again. Unfortunately, it was because the defense was winning the day out here. So what do you expect out of Daniel Jones? I hope that he's going to be able to find a rapport with his wide receivers. You look at this and Kadarius Tony still has another week or so before he will be back on the field. He was looking great, I'm told, before he had a hamstring injury. You have Kenny Galladay, where they're trying to get that rapport and chemistry down, but then he goes out in the game and doesn't catch the football, and he doesn't get separation, and so that's going to be an issue. Sterling Shepard on the pup list right now, so uh, where you want to see Daniel Jones take that next step with his receivers, unfortunately, those receivers aren't able to take that step with him. We'll see how it all plays out for Jones in that receiving court. As for the guy standing next to Jones, Saquon Barkley, in a contract year, playing out that final year of his rookie deal and still plenty to prove because Florida ceiling, a lot of inconsistencies with Barkley. And if you're talking about breaking off a feature back, it's going to cost this Giants franchise. What do you see different in Barkley here in the early going this year at camp uh, preseason, taking a look at some of the expectations for Saquon this year? Yeah, I love that question, Joe, because what do I see different about Saquon? I see vintage Saquon for the first time since before that ACL. He never really looked right last season. What I see from him and certainly saw in um, that preseason game against the Pats, I saw a guy who was a more decisive runner. He's not mm -hmm. dancing back there wondering where he's going to hit the hole or when he's going to hit the hole. He is making that decision. He's making that cut, and he's going north to south. Saw that again earlier today. This is the last training camp with fans here at the New York Giants facility at Quest Diagnostics. And uh, what you heard from the fans as he broke one off, to use a, a phrase of yours, heard a whole lot of cheers out of these fans. It felt like vintage Saquon. So I don't want to get Giants fans too riled up, <laughs> too excited. But in seeing him, watching him on television when they were there in Foxborough, watching him out here today, talking with people, they're saying, yeah, a much more decisive runner. You talk about a guy who has a lot of expectations on him, a guy who has something to prove. Look no further than Saquon. Barkley. You allude to the injury issues with Barkley in the past and the current issues for guys like Kadarius Tony, Young Joka, uh, trying to get back out there on the field for the early goings of this season. A lot of guys are dinged up in this room right now. Can you take us through some of the latest uh, regarding the injury status of some of the major players here for the Giants? Yeah, so they have 91 players on this roster. You add an international player that doesn't count against their 90 max, so you have 91. They have about 19 who are banged up who aren't participating right now. So back at the math uh, napkin math, you're talking about a fourth to a fifth of this team that right now they can't be out there participating. Left guard Shane Lemieux, he injured his toe there in the game against the Patriots. He's not going to be back out here anytime soon. It seemed like in, in sort of deciphering what Brian Dable was saying, he is, his week one might be a little bit in question. And so you're looking at that offensive line, that reworked offensive line, especially in the middle in that interior, and they're going to have to make some changes. There may be Ben Bredesen, who took the first team stats today at left guard. He might be your week one starter. But again, we talk about Kadarius Tony, young Joka, as he's known in the rap community. <laughs> he is a guy who, uh, unfortunately, he's just been dealing with that hamstring. And he dealt with injuries last season where he only played in 10 games. But when he was out there on the field, my goodness, was he dynamic. He's just a guy that the Giants have to be able to rely upon, that they're not sure that they can, just because, hey, he's a smaller 
faster, not a whole lot of body fat guy. We have seen time and again, these guys in the NFL, maybe sometimes they overtrain. And I'm using a general and a generalization here on Kadarius Tony, but obviously he's been struggling to be healthy. This is an organization that over the past five, six, seven years, they've actually been at the bottom of the league in terms of games missed from their starters. And so uh, in sort of seeing Joe Shane, the first-year GM, and talking with first-year head coach Brian Dable, who said, I, we haven't been able to find a theme or some common thread here. Injuries are going to happen throughout the preseason and training camp. It's football, after all. But very clearly, this is a team that has to take a very hard look at its sports science, at its strength and conditioning, and mm. figure out why it has been that way in the past and how they can get it better moving into the future. Giants fans are hoping for a full body of work out of young Joka rather than some hit singles as he's given us here in the early going of his NFL career. JJ, I had to get you at one. Uh, you were catching up with Brian Dable just moments ago as well. The head coach is the latest in a spinning revolving door of head coaches there with the Giants franchise since the Tom Coughlin era ended. Dable trying to impart some sort of consistency here, but first needs to build this roster in his image. How are they going about that process? Yeah, well, first of all, to your earlier sort of part there, Joe, People around here are happy coming to work, and they're not mm. worried as they're sort of walking the halls and talking with staffers here that it's just a different vibe here. It's a collaborative process between Brian Dable and Joe Shane, the first-year general manager, but also that they bring in other departments from the building, that they understand that it's all for one and one for all. Here we obviously know that there was Joe Judge here and his short tenure and how things soured there. We know that Dave Gettleman had his way of doing things as general manager and how he was uh, allowed to finish out his contract and retire. This is a new page, a new era for the New York Giants. Finally getting someone from outside the Giants family in Joe Shane and bringing in a, a Brian Dable and that offensive mind. Uh, they are very, very hopeful of where this team can go. All that said, though, this is not the most talented roster you're going to see in the NFL. And I think that folks here know that, and it's going to take time. They're up against the salary cap. They have about $5 million or so in cap space. Well, they're going to need about $3.5 million of that just for their practice squad. So if we talk about injuries and as they pile up, and unfortunately you would probably have to anticipate there's likely going to be other injuries with two preseason games left and plenty other uh, training camp practices remaining. So you have to be able to prepare for that. What's this team going to be able to do? Probably going to have to push some money out into the future. Not something that if you're a first-year general manager, you love to do, but something that Joe Shane's probably going to have to do in order to kick the can down the road. Some candidates, if I'm thinking off the top of my head, maybe a Leonard Williams, for example. But all that is a little bit further down the road. What this team needs to do right now, there's going to be a little bit more roster churn. They, they're kind of set at all the starter positions, both on offense and defense, but you gotta have depth. And this is nothing new when you're talking about a rebuilding team, not a tank team or anything like that, but a team that does need to build here uh, this upcoming season. So I would not at all be surprised, Joe, to see the New York Giants as you get to roster cut down day, as we kind of creep closer to Labor Day weekend. We know the roster cuts happen right before that. Look for the Giants to be very, very active in looking around the league uh, for some other uh, potential players who can provide a little bit more depth and competition here for this team. CBS Sports lead NFL insider Jonathan Jones back on road as camp rolls on. Thank you, JJ. Let's take a look now at what lies ahead for the G-Men. And here is a look at that schedule. Wrapping up the preseason, we'll get a stab next Sunday at the defending AFC champion Cincinnati Bengals before facing off with their neighbors in MetLife Stadium. They'll get the Jets to round out that preseason schedule, but it all starts week one. Titans, then they go Panthers and the Cowboys in primetime week three, Monday Night Football. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.